Good afternoon, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. My name is Mason Willoughby, and I am the lead defense attorney for my client, Anand Syed. Now, Anand Syed is by every metric, when you first look at him, a good kid. He had good grades. He was popular. He was on the homecoming court at his school. He had lots of friends. He had a girlfriend who loved him. He had a family who loved him. He was, by all means, a normal person. And everybody makes mistakes. I'm sure the prosecution will try and bring out some of the mistakes that Adnan made. He did some things that you probably shouldn't do. But it's important to keep in mind that there is a difference between doing things like smoking weed with your friends or something and murder. Murder is something that requires true evil. And as we go through this trial, I want you to look at the character of Adnan Syed and ask yourself whether this normal, good student, very involved with his community, he went to the mosque almost every night, he was helping children, he was doing his service, and ask yourself if he was capable of murdering the girlfriend who he loved. Also, the murder on the most holy day of his year, Ramadan like murdering somebody on Christmas. Now the only evidence the prosecution will be able to provide for you are testimony from witnesses. They have no physical evidence to implicate a non in this crime. No DNA, no murder weapon, nothing. There are three things that you need to suspect somebody of a murder. Motive, means, and opportunity. <clears throat> and they won't be able to prove that without their testimony from unreliable witnesses people who have lied, people who have changed their stories, and people who have been manipulated. Now, I want to focus, I said motive means an opportunity, I want to focus on motive. We will get testimony from people at a non-school saying that his relationship with Hay was a normal high school relationship, and the breakup was a normal high school breakup. Sure, they were sad about it for a few days, but motivating him to then go out and murder her? Not even close. Now there are no claims that they can make in this trial that we can't dispute. There is nothing that won't give you reasonable doubt that Adnan was the murderer. Like I said, no physical evidence. None. Do you really think it's worth the risk to put somebody who may be innocent in prison for their entire life when there's nothing that can physically connect them to the act of murder? And the case that they will make won't be able to work. We will also have testimony showing that there simply wasn't enough time in the day to commit the act. Both, the, uh, both my client, Anand, and the victim, Heyman Lee, were both doing things after school. Then Anand had to go to track practice. And then we'll have testimony saying that he was at the mosque later that evening, praying with his dad. There wasn't enough time for my client to commit this murder. Now another thing the prosecution will probably hit on is that Anand, his alibi, is a little shaky. Now like I said, I will attempt to dispute that point by laying out a timeline for you. But even then, do you really think just because a person can't remember what they were doing six weeks ago, that means that they must have been murdering their ex-girlfriend? I mean, you ask yourself, can you remember what you were doing the entire day six weeks ago? You think back. You can probably think, I was probably doing this, I was probably doing that, but it would be almost impossible for you to remember exactly what you were doing. Yet the prosecution will probably seem to think that that's what should be expected of a nod, that he should remember all his movements during that day. And just because he's like every normal person and can't account for that, they're going to accuse him of murder. Now, my, the prosecution spoke about justice. The murder of Heyman Lee was horrible. She didn't, nobody deserves to be murdered. Heyman Lee was a normal, happy girl, and she was cut down in her prime. It's horrible. But justice isn't served if the wrong man is sitting in prison. If somebody is murdered, and then you execute somebody, and then you find evidence later, that, later on saying that they didn't murder them, is it still justice? Is it still closure? 
for the family of the victim if the wrong person was punished? It's not justice by, if you create another injustice by having the wrong man in prison. So throughout this trial, as different things are said, as different stories circulate, I need you to keep an open mind about my client. Consider things from his point of view. Consider things from his fellow classmates' point of view. That he was a normal, everyday kid, an honor student, homecoming court, a good athlete, a good friend. And ask yourself whether he is capable of committing murder. And I want to put an emphasis on the fact that this is cold-blooded murder. No matter what they tell you about his character, they won't be able to tell you anything that could connect doing drugs or being out past his curfew or anything that would connect to murder, the most evil thing any, any person could ever possibly do to another person. So I want you to all keep that in mind as this trial proceeds. And thank you for your time, and thank you for your deliberations.